buds. Thank you so much, Cult Eviction, for coming on the show. No I'm problem. really excited to touch base with you and speak about how you managed to transform a shipping container into a recording studio. Um, first of all, I would like to talk about yourself. Um, I understand that you're an artist. Uh, do you want to speak about a bit about what you do? Sure, yeah. So um, I'm a, kind of like a producer artist. Mm -hmm. So um, I release my own music with um, lots of different artists try to keep it varied and do like loads of different styles um, but yeah mainly sort of had that background of being a uh, producer first and then I was just like I'm, I want to release my own thing and just have some stuff like underneath my name and and yeah it kind of just went from there really okay nice so how old are you I'm 26 26 okay yeah. so when did you get into music is it something you've done from a child or well <laughs> Kind of, yeah. So um, there was always like music being played around the house when I was younger. Uh, my dad is uh, super into music as well as my mum. My dad would be into stuff like Oasis mm -hmm. and um, The Smiths and like loads of like guitar bands. So when I was about 14, there was like a guitar around the house and I'd like pick it up, start playing that. But um, yeah, I kind of got into like guitar music, Arctic Monkeys, Kings of Leon, all that sort of thing first. Um, and then just from that kind of progressed into like songwriting and um, writing my own tracks, um, playing in bands, doing like acoustic sets and stuff like that. Mm. Um, but yeah, as, as sort of time went on, I kind of switched up a little bit and kind of went into more sort of production side of it mm. and like making more electronic music and um things like that but yeah it's kind of originated from that love of just you know guitar bands and um yeah singer songwriters and stuff okay like nice so you said it was from about 14 so did you ever go to like music school did you study music what was your kind of journey into music yeah so i studied music in for like gcse and a level nice. and stuff like that um, but back then it was more sort of, you know, like studying classical music, which wasn't really for me at the time, but I just loved music so much that I was just happy to be doing it. Um, and then, yeah, after that, I went to uni in, um, Southampton, uh, to do a music performance course. Nice. So that was just like, you know, working with like different people, um, in bands, um, and in my second year, that's when I really got into songwriting and producing mm -hmm. and stuff like that. But yeah, it was, it was just a great experience to sort of network with loads of different people, um, play in bands. We did a couple of uh, live gigs in Southampton in places like The Joiners and mm -hmm. The Talking Heads. Um, so yeah, it was a great experience. Loved kind of doing more of the live stuff and working with like, um, you know, different musicians. Um, but that kind of really shaped what I wanted to do, well, what I'm doing now, which is kind of songwriting and pushing that side of things um, to the forefront more than the sort of playing in bands. Mm -hmm. So um, you went to uni, if you could go back, would there be anything that you changed about that decision or is that something you'd recommend for people that want to do what you're doing? <coughs> I think it's like each person's going to have a different way of, you know, doing it. Uh, for me, it was great to network and, you know, learn what I learned, but Sometimes you need to do it just to figure out what you don't want to do. Yeah. Like, for me, like, I realised I don't actually want to play in bands. Like, mm. I don't want to do live sets. I mean, live, you know, performances. Um, but, yeah, it just kind of, it was good to know, again, like what I said before, to shape it to the sort of songwriting side of things 
um, and all the contacts that I made through university, you know, I still talk to quite a lot of them now. So, um, yeah, if anyone's thinking of like going through that university route, um, I would recommend it, but it's not for everyone, mm-hmm. for sure. So about your studio now, mm-hmm. what was it that led you to actually deciding to create a studio? So obviously, like we've had feels like like a million lockdowns mm-hmm. now. Um, and I think it was the last one that we had. Um, I was just think I was kind of like evaluating my life in mm-hmm. a way. And I was just like, I need to do something different, like feels a bit stagnant right now. So, yeah, I just. I kind of made that sort of move of, um, you know, I, I was producing in my bedroom. I was, you know, having people over recording in my bedroom and stuff. And I was just like, yeah, we need to, we need to switch this up. Mm-hmm. So um, I found um, an advert for a shipping container on Gumtree, and just thought, yes, yeah, it's quite a unique thing. Um, went to see it and. Um, yeah, just kind of fell in love with the idea of just like opening this door and like it's a world to somewhere else. Um, when it looks like a metal box on the outside, but on the inside you can like create whatever you want. So yeah, I just kind of um, fell in love with that idea and just wanted to like follow it through. So um, with the help of like quite a few friends, we just started um, doing like all the soundproofing and um, picking colors and and stuff like that um, going on Wayfair and looking at sofas all that standard stuff but um, yeah I just wanted to create a place that felt like almost like a home from home somewhere that was comfortable but you could still create amazing music in there mm-hmm. so have you always seen yourself as someone that's quite entrepreneurial um, I don't know I don't think so but I guess like that sort of the jump to to move to a studio like that is probably quite a bit of a mm. entrepreneurial move. Definitely. Was it? Is it? Has it always been in your plan? Like you know, as you said, you're trying to focus on music and songwriting. Was was it in your vision to actually have your own studio? Uh, yeah, I think I've been. Eventually, that's something that I always kind of dreamed of. Um, I had a couple of mates that were a bit older than me in in university that they'd gone on to mm-hmm. do something similar and I'd always like look up to that and want to do something like that. So yeah, I guess it was eventually in, in, in the plan, but I just didn't think something like this. Yeah, would... it happened in a different way. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So what have you enjoyed most about creating this studio? Um, just the freedom of it really. Like it was a blank canvas to start with. So just, you know, like I said, like picking the sofa was just mm-hmm. like something that I wouldn't really have done before and and colour schemes and, you know, where everything was set out. But ultimately that the sort of the aesthetic of it doesn't really matter. It's what comes out of it that's important. So um yeah, um I've just been really enjoying writing music with like people that I wouldn't have reached mm-hmm. before in my bedroom kind of thing. So um yeah, that's been the most exciting part, just meeting new people, reaching out to new people. Um, and yeah, like even coming here, that's mm-hmm. something that I probably wouldn't have thought of doing if I hadn't. You didn't have the studio. Exactly, yeah. yeah so. Amazing. Um, so on the flip side, what has been the biggest challenges of creating the studio? Is there anything that you stumbled across which you didn't expect or that you might have thought, oh, is this going to be possible? Um, I guess there's a lot more to think about in terms of like the business side of things and like marketing and promotion um to a certain extent you do that before you have a studio obviously as an artist and you're promoting your music Mm -hmm. and um marketing it in the right way but you've got to like almost approach it in a different way because you're trying to sell a service um but at the same time you don't want to sort of push push it on the wrong people Mm -hmm. because um, what I found is I want to work with people that are like-minded and, you know, want to have a career in music and develop their sound and we, I want to progress with them together. Mm-hmm. So if someone it isn't, you know, on that same path, I feel like it's a bit hard to like help them. Mm-hmm. Um, but having said that, I also, um, work with people that, you know, 
will just do it for fun like because I that's the way I started out mm. I was just doing it for fun so um, I'm happy to do either really so at the moment um, well the artists that have come through to the studio what sort of genres of music have you been working with what sort of artists have you had quite varied really um, so I'm working currently with an artist called Connor Miles who um, does like acoustic stuff um, okay. Um, also working with an artist called Trems who does sort of more like drill and trap kind of vibe. Um, also been working with an artist called Miles Smith, um, which we've already released with um, quite a few times now. And he does, so he's quite varied, so he'll do like dark pop, you know, he'll do like a bit of a sort of trap ballad vibe and mm. R&B. So I don't, I don't really like saying um, I'm just sticking to one genre mm-hmm. because not only does that limit yourself, but I just would find it really boring if I was just doing the same thing every day. So, yeah, I like to switch it up and, and go for different genres for sure. Nice. Um, and in sort of like your bigger goals and vision, what is it that you want to do with the studio that you haven't done yet? Um... I think I think in terms of sort of future plans, I want to. Um, obviously, we've started doing um, sessions there and, and stuff like that, but I do want to sort of branch out to do maybe like live videos and mm-hmm. and maybe stuff like that. Um, but also, I kind of want to build a bit of a roster of um, artists where we're developing them as an mm-hmm. artist. So um, is that more like a label or? Yeah, maybe more more of a label, but with a like big focus on artist development. Mm-hmm. So you know, we'll work on lyrics, melodies, uh, structure, their sound. Mm-hmm. Like, because I feel like quite a lot of artists feel like, right, I need to write something and I need to release it tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Like, I need to, you know, I'm 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 behind the game. Like, I'm, I need to catch up with all these other artists. And sometimes it's about you know, um, writing like five or ten tracks, having that sort of base of tracks and then being like cool like what's what's your favorite track what's Mm. what's the sound what we're trying to say with these tracks um and focus on you know what they're trying to do and trying to say as an artist rather than just getting music out because they've finished Mm. it kind of thing so do you feel like having this studio in terms of your time investment for yourself Mm -hmm. has it affected you as an artist um a little bit yeah it has it has a little bit but i'm still i'm still writing but um i'm kind of doing like that thing that i just said where i'm building a sort of a bank of like 10 tracks Mm -hmm. or so um and then maybe in the next year i'm looking to release maybe a couple but i like to like some tracks don't come out for years um like for example, Adele's obviously just released her new track, and she's been sitting on that for you know over a year now. So, um, and I think that's a sign of a good song as well. If you've sat with it for a while and you're mm-hmm. still enjoying it, and it still means something to you. So, um, yeah, I'm not in a rush to release anything. I want to keep that standard of like high quality, and um, obviously it's important to be consistent, but. Um, once you have that sort of high quality release, you can follow it up with, mm-hmm. if you've got that bank of like 10 tracks, you can follow it up. Mm-hmm. So in terms of actually creating the studio, how many people were involved in getting it set up? Um, quite a few. So um, I had mates help me with like the soundproofing. Mm-hmm. Um, I had my friend Nathan help me with like painting and varnishing mm-hmm. and that kind of thing. Um, I had a few friends help me with just general like promotion and marketing advice because like as I said it's quite a new thing for me mm-hmm. so I feel like I've learned so much through my friends and through the connections that I have um, in order to sort of like get get the space to where it is now. Mm-hmm. And what advice would you give for someone that's wanting to create a studio from a shipping container? <laughs> um, I think uh, planning is super important, like, um, and budgeting obviously as well. 
Um, I had a bit of a, a plan there, but obviously things happen and it doesn't always go to plan. But if you don't have a plan in the first place, then your, your head's going to be scrambled. You're going to be all over the place. So, um, yeah, I think, um, like, even for the sort of the, the layout and where I was going to put everything, I drew a little picture at the start to kind of visualise where I wanted everything. Um, so, yeah, definitely plan, um, definitely budget, um, and be prepared to, like, not not follow that plan mm, to the team adaptable really. exactly yeah because yeah, things will happen and you've got yeah definitely be adaptable to that mm -hmm. and do you have like sound engineers that you're working with or who's who's kind of in the studio on a daily basis um so i'm pretty much there as every, every single day um but i do have um a few producers that i work really closely with so um link leo is is one of those so he's a great artist producer as well um he has um like a few clients that he works with mm -hmm. um so he comes through um i've got uh, another artist producer called love child he he um he sometimes comes through um but yeah i think i think with the connections that i have we all sort of like almost when when we need to use a space they'll come through and we'll work mm -hmm. together or or they can use it on their own kind of thing so um yeah those are just a few i'm sure i've missed out quite 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 a few in terms of artists but you know i don't want to just like throw names out yeah, there but yeah um yeah those are a few mm -hmm. and in terms of it being you know where it is where sorry where is the studio actually based so it's kind of like in between North Acton and Halsden Station, mm -hmm. so somewhere in the middle there. Um, yeah, it's it's on North Acton Road. So, mm -hmm. do you think, in terms of like new clientele that haven't met you before, mm -hmm. um, and maybe like know the standard of your work, do you think it being in the places and being in um, from a shipping container that mm -hmm. that would affect maybe some people thinking, oh. Is it like, would I be better off going to another studio maybe who, which has, mm. I don't know, in a multi-story building or something like that? Yeah, no, I completely get that. Um, I think, I think for me, like I was attracted to it because of its uniqueness mm. and hopefully um, potential clients see that too. Like it's not, it's not your sort of standard uh, studio setup. Um, it's got a bit of a different vibe around it as well because... Um, there's about 18 shipping containers in total mm -hmm. with lots of different creatives and lots of different businesses there. So um, we've got like a production company, a clothing brand, um, a couple of other different studios as well, record label. Nice. Um, so yeah, it's, it's kind of turned into this nice little dysfunctional community family thing, um, which has kind of helped me in a way because you know, if a client comes to me and goes, um, yeah, I'm looking for some merch. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, let's go next door mm -hmm. and talk to um, the clothing brand or I'm looking for a music video. And, you know, you can kind of provide those little extra things that the artist is looking for. Um, but yeah, I mean, I guess the uniqueness of it and the sort of um, the quality that comes out of it doesn't really matter what your gear is or what where you are mm -hmm. it's about you know the the tracks that come out of the space mm -hmm. so and when you you know you said like during lockdown you were feeling that things were a bit stagnant mm -hmm. was it more in terms of music or was it more in terms of maybe like finance and business that you were thinking of the, like the reason why you created it um i was just thinking more like more about my life in general mm -hmm. i was just like Obviously, it was a bit of a reset for everyone and everyone had a lot of time to just think about everything. So I was like, yeah, what do I actually want to do with my life? Like, am I just going to regret not having tried it? Mm -hmm. Am I, yeah, I just, yeah, it was just one of those moments where it's just like, come on, like, let's do something mm -hmm. and let's try it. So, um, yeah, also, because I was, I was still making music, so it wasn't a case of like, wanting to make more of that or anything to do with that um and i've never really 
had that sort of like business like mindset of yeah I need to go out and get money mm-hmm. and that kind of thing I just wanted to make make tunes with great artists mm-hmm. that's what it boils down to yeah completely understand that um is there anything that like any more sort of advice that you'd want to give artists in terms of experience um or future people that you know may come to the studio and work with you Mm. um i think uh it's important to be like really Mm open-minded uh really versatile and just kind of like get out there and network with like people that you respect and people that you think are talented or you know there's something maybe like their image or something like that because you just never know Mm -hmm. like the amount of people that I've just got in touch with over Instagram just said hey I like to track um and now like you know a year or so later we're we're Mm -hmm. writing together so yeah don't be afraid of um people saying no Mm -hmm. um because you'll get a lot of that in, in in the music industry um so yeah just be persistent uh not annoying obviously (laughs) but yeah just kind of have that um drive um and be open to criticism be open to developing yourself um and yeah be open to just moving forward Mm -hmm. and i can obviously see that you know the main reason that you wanted to open a studio was know it's your passion for music behind that so for those type of people that you've just described um are you is your are you in the studio are you quite willing to offer quite a lot of help and services for free or how does it kind of work at the studio at the moment um yeah so in terms of obviously for recording and production and that side of things um it's all based on sort of um an, a rate um which for different artists we can discuss like budget and all mm-hmm. that kind of thing um but um i like to provide them with more than just um you know a track or um, an ep or whatever um if i see that you know they're going to benefit from getting in touch with you know a videographer that i know because mm-hmm. they have a similar image and it could suit their style then i'd happily just introduce them for free there's no there's no I'm not going to charge people for just mm-hmm. you know introducing people um and also um stuff like artwork as well we can offer because um as I mentioned earlier my friend Nathan um he has um he's an artist um he goes under the name of crude cartoons um and he can do anything from like animation to you know um art artwork and um yeah I think it's important to um over deliver when Mm. you're working with artists you know give them obviously a great sounding track but you can give them you know have them leaving the studio with like yeah that was that was a really good experience I'm Mm. I'm, going to come back here yeah that's definitely what you'll have over like other studios do you feel like in high competition with other studios like maybe in the area or um no uh because you know everyone's trying to do the same thing mm. um, and people want to work with different people for different reasons um, I feel like you kind of get yourself into quite a dangerous headspace if you try and compete with other people mm. you just got to keep doing your thing and um, if anything I'm, I'm here to support people that are like doing the same thing as me um, especially with clients that I just think you know what you're you're a great artist but you don't really suit what what I'm trying to do Mm -hmm. right now so I think you might suit this person because they're specialized in this section or whatever so yeah I don't feel like I'm in competition at all with Mm -hmm. anyone I appreciate that um so I think we'll just leave the show on the note of what would what would you say regardless of the studio is your biggest achievement up to this day Wow, uh, biggest achievement. Um, I mean, I guess, I guess at university I got a couple of awards for songwriting, so that was a big, a big achievement. But um, I think, I think really getting involved with BBC introducing and um, 
yeah, some of the stuff that I did with Mar Smith, as I mentioned earlier, we've been featured with quite highly with BBC Introducing. Uh, and during lockdown, we were part of a um, online festival mm-hmm. where um, we just sent in a, a video and uh, did a live performance. So, yeah, I think I think that side of things, like me as a 14-year-old kid, would have been like, wow, that's amazing. Mm-hmm. So, um, but right now it's... It's not until you have that reflection you think, oh, that was pretty How cool. How far I come, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, um, I think that's, that's... But also the fact that I'm able to just have a studio right now and do it for a living is, I think, for me, a, a huge mm-hmm. achievement as well. Okay, well, thank you so much for no coming problem. on. Um, you know, I hope everyone follows Cameron Studios. I think, have you got, like, you've got some promotional videos that you've been putting out yeah so I just recently worked with um, a videographer called uh, Kieran um, Kieran Way Films I think it is on Instagram and yeah so you can find us at um, Kevin Studios at Kevin Studios uh, and on Instagram and also um, I'm at Cold Eviction on Instagram as well okay thank you so much no problem